Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and this is Trading Places Live. It's Thursday, May 25th, 2023, and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for just a little bit later this morning. Uh, let's see, currently we have futures mixed a little bit, um, showing the Dow Jones futures down almost 100 points, S&P 500 futures up 25, NASDAQ futures up 270 points, roughly 2% um, as a result of a blowout earnings report by NVIDIA. Uh, we actually had a live trading session yesterday, told the folks in the group this could be the best report of the season. I thought it was going to be a massive blowout report. We got that huge reaction to the upside in NVIDIA, and that is carrying the NASDAQ this morning. Crude oil futures down one4 um, that's about almost 2% back below $73 a barrel. 10-year Treasury yield, though, continuing to be a little bit of a menace. Up three basis points this morning, 3.74, almost 3.75%. Uh, let's take a look at the agenda for today. Got another packed schedule. Got the daily market recap, talking technically chart of the day. Going to get into highlights from our live trading session from yesterday. It's a great session. Very, very well attended. Got a great community at Earnings Beats. I want to thank everybody for uh, making it to that event. Those that made it, I think, uh, turned out to be a very profitable day. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, then we've got Earnings Spotlight. We'll wrap up with the three you must see. Um, but let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, we got a lot to go over today. Try and squeeze all this in. So let's start off with the daily market recap. Dow Jones Industrial Average yesterday down 255 points, S&P 500 down 30, NASDAQ down 76, mid caps down 24, and the small caps down 15. So across the board, wasn't very good. Small caps and mid caps actually led to the downside after uh, trying to stage a little bit of a rally recently. We did get that big reversal on the small caps on Tuesday, and that continued into Wednesday, and we saw selling throughout much of the day on Wednesday. From a sector perspective, energy, the only group to the upside, only one of 11, uh, finished up about a little more than four-tenths of 1%. Real estate down more than 2%, about 2.2%. Financials, 1.3%. Industrials, 1.3%. And materials down a little more than 1.1%. Notice anything missing? I mean, we've had a lot of uh, selling here the last two or three days. I know the bears are probably getting excited, but do you notice anything that's missing from the... Uh, the uh, sectors that were leading to the downside. You see consumers discretionary or communication services. Where's technology? Three aggressive groups leading the market to the upside are not leading to the downside. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that as we go throughout the session, but I thought that was very interesting. Just wanted to point it out. Wasn't a very good day. I mean, look at the S&P, look at the Dow, look at the NASDAQ, small caps, mid caps, everything down. But it wasn't as bearish as you might think. Um, we talked a little bit about that yesterday during the trading session. But uh, let's move on. 10-year Treasury yield. Um, as I mentioned, this chart doesn't show it, but it is up a few basis points this morning. Back up near that 375 level. We're clearly in an uptrend in the short term. Uh, we've got the 20 that's now crossed back up above the 50. We've got that PPO in positive territory, and we've got the yield above both moving averages. So that configuration right there is a short-term uptrend. There's no uh, denying that. We've seen it before. We've seen the same thing happen, maybe not quite the same back in December, and the reason it wasn't quite the same, we didn't have enough strength to get the 20 above the 50. But it did happen at the end of February and into early March, where you can see the 20 crossed over the 50, had a big breakout above the prior highs, and it fell apart to the downside. We'll have to see how this one plays out, but currently, 10-year Treasury yield undoubtedly in an uptrend, and the higher it goes, the worse it'll be for equities. Uh, moving on to the S&P 500. So let's talk technically here for a couple of minutes. Um, we broke out above the 4179 level, didn't hold. We got up a little above 4200. I still think the big level now becomes 4305. To the downside, we didn't hold the 20 day. That was a little surprising to me. I thought with the breakout, might pull back at that 20 day and then bounce. We went a little further to the downside, which in my view now leads us down to a 4050. 
as key support. Obviously, the recent high is our recent uh, price resistance. So that's our trading range for now. Uh, I suspect we're going to break out of it to the upside. Others may disagree, but those are the levels I'd watch. Right around 4,200, maybe just a little above 4,200, and then back down at that 4050 level. That's our trading range currently. The uh, I wanted to also show you this five-day chart because when I say that things underneath the surface weren't quite as bad as what it might look on the surface, this is a pretty good chart to illustrate. So the S&P 500 topped back on the 19th, which was Friday of last week. And we tried to move up a little bit, beginning of the week, Monday morning, pulled back. Then we had a last little rally at the end of the day, and then we started selling off the final hour. And since then, the S&P 500 has mostly moved lower. We've gone from above 4,200 all the way down to a low just above 4,100. So we dropped about two and a half percentage points. But during this run to the downside, Look at the QQQ relative to the S&P 500. Now, this is before NVIDIA reported. This number is going to jump today, or this ratio. But the QQQ, which is more growth-oriented, Spider, I'm not going to say it's a value index, but it's more value-oriented than the QQQ. So we got more of a growth spin versus a value spin, looking at this ratio. And throughout the selling, I mean, we had periods where we went down a little bit, but look, yesterday during the day, as the S&P was just going sideways, look at the growth, look at the QQQ starting to make its way back up versus the S&P 500. Been saying this for a while. Growth is in favor. Growth is not in favor when you are heading into recession or if the market is worried about a recession. Look at the XLY, XLP. It did go down. Well, we kind of went up early in the morning on uh, Tuesday. But then we went down all the way to the bottom. But again, sideways action. Look at the rally yesterday throughout the day after the early morning selling. And that was one of the things I was saying during our live show yesterday is that we were just getting a taste yesterday in the, in the uh, live trading room we were getting a taste of what we've seen for almost a year now. Gap down, selling in the morning, recovery later in the day. And so in the room, we took advantage of it. Saw it early on, explained to members how I would approach this type of market. And then we made money. And I'm going to go over some of that with you in just a little bit. Um, but there you, you got the QQQ versus spiders rising. You've got the XLY versus the XLP rising back during the day. Look at the IWF. This is large cap growth versus large cap value. IWF, IWD. From 1 o'clock on Tuesday to yesterday's close, it was a nice steady increase, growth versus value. Meanwhile, middle of the day Tuesday, the S&P 500 was dropping. So again, those looking at the surface, yeah, it looked like the S&P 500 maybe making some serious headway to the downside. Those of us looking beneath the surface are saying, mm, probably not going to last. I think we're getting poised for yet another move to the upside, but hey, that's what I've been calling for since June of last year. And we keep rising. I think we're going higher. Um, and nothing that has happened over the last two or three days really changes that idea. Here was the sector summary, just to give you an idea. Energy, there's the leader. I talked about this at the open. There's consumer discretionary. Second best group yesterday. It was down. Second best group. Communication services. It was down. Third best group. Does this look like a really rough sell-off? Technology, granted, was down a little bit further, but there were four groups worse than technology. Consumer discretionary, communication services, and technology make up roughly about 47%, I'm estimating. I don't know the exact numbers, but it's probably somewhere around 47% of the S&P 500. I'm sorry, but if you don't get those down at the bottom of the group when we go lower, 
it's hard for me to get bearish at all. When during the day, we see the market going down and we see growth versus value ratios going up, that's telling me that during while the selling is taking place, there's rotation into the more aggressive areas. Again, it's about relative strength. Yes, consumer discretionary was down. Communication services was down. Technology was down. But these three groups combined outperformed the S&P 500. That is a good signal. It's just one day. I always say, hey, you can't rely on one day. I'm not, I'm not relying on one day. I'm saying that this is a continuation of what we've seen since June of last year. There have been pockets, periods where it was, you know, things looked a little bit more bearish. But overall, if you look objectively at what has happened over the last year, the market and the big Wall Street firms has been manipulating us, telling us how bad things are and buying in the aggressive areas like crazy, filling their coffers, stuffing their stockings, whatever you want to call it. And it continues. Uh, NASDAQ 100 still well above its 20 day. It did make the breakout above the August high. So clearly the relative strength there is pretty evident. Um, but the last couple of days pulling back, seen some gap downs. And I want to show you, this is going to be the chart of the day. I want to move on to the chart of the day. Show you NVIDIA because this was right before it reported earnings last night. Here was the pullback, quote unquote pullback. Now I'm gonna shorten this chart a little bit so we can get a little bit better view of what happened here. But I want you to notice a couple things here on this NVIDIA chart. <clears throat> First of all, made this huge move to the upside on increasing volume during option expiration week. NVIDIA, I believe it's, I don't remember exactly where the max pain was. I want to say it was like in the 260s or something. I don't have my max pain spreadsheet out. But as we went throughout the week, max pain gave us a directional clue much lower than current price. But market makers, their capital, you know, their resources are limited. They don't have unlimited resources. You can't fight volume and a move to the upside. And so the market, NVIDIA, was under extreme accumulation. And then they had this quote unquote pullback. And I'm putting it in quotes, why? Well, let me explain to you why. We closed here at 316.78. That was back on May 18th. Closed at 316.78. Yesterday, we closed at 305.38. That was a drop of $11.40, right? We had a nice little pullback, $11.40. It's okay to have a little bit of selling, right? Except there was no selling. If you go back and you look at the gaps, here was the close, here was the open. So on Friday the 19th, we had a gap down of a buck 42. From the close on Friday to the open on Monday, we had a gap down of $3.63. From the close on Monday to the open on Tuesday, we had a gap down of a buck 76. And from the close on Tuesday to the open yesterday, we had a gap down of $4.78. So yeah, we went down $11.40. Do you know what the cumulative gaps were? $11.59. NVIDIA during the trading day actually went up 19 cents over the last four days. There's your pullback. There's your selling, if you will. Now I'm gonna show you something. I took a screenshot of this at the very beginning of our trading session yesterday. And if you all don't, haven't used our upcoming earnings chart list. I can't understand why. This is such a great feature that we provide our members. Every day, we provide a chart list of companies that are gonna be reporting after the bell that day and before the bell the next day. 
So it's essentially telling you all the companies that will be reporting after the close that day. The next day when the market opens at 9.30, 9.31, right, you know, right after the market opens, you can do basically what I did, which is take a screenshot of the companies on this list. These were all the companies that had reported either Tuesday evening or Wednesday morning. And what I did is I brought them up in percentage change order. So you can see Urban was the big one, gaining 18.45%. And then all the way down at the bottom, you had Wolf, which was down 13.06%. You come over here, far right, you'll see May 24th, and this was like right at 9.30. Some of these stocks had not even quite opened yet. They were still showing the close from the prior day. But most of these were 9.30 or 9.31. Now, of all these stocks, I, I put the scooter in here, and as I go down this scooter list, I noticed New Relic. This is a software firm. Software been, has been absolutely on fire in 2023. And New Relic had a scooter of 97 going in. That tells us that's a pretty strong relative strength stock. It was down 8.5% at the open. And you can see there only 6,000 shares had traded. So it's very, very early in the day. And there was the price, 75.50. That was the low of the day. That was the opening price, and that turned out to be the low of the day. But once we saw this, we looked to see what the earnings were, and earnings had beaten Wall Street estimates, revenues and earnings both, top and bottom line, both beat revenue uh, or both beat Wall Street estimates. And so we looked at the chart and thought, wow, this is one of the leaders in software had a great report, and yet it's a sell on the news. Buy on the rumor, sell on the news. And so what I explain to members and what I explain on here every day, when you get a gap up, especially with earnings and you get all or, or gap down, either way, but if you get a gap up, you got a lot of buyers coming in at the open. If you get a gap down, you got a lot of sellers coming in at the open. What are the market makers doing? They provide liquidity. So if there's an imbalance in, in demand and supply, they take the other side of the trade. That's what they do. So just wanted you to keep in mind that uh, new relic, because we're going to talk about that one in just a second. But market makers take the other side of the trade. And they, we know they make money. They don't make money on every trade, but they generally make money every day. So if you can figure out which side of the trade they're on, you can make some money. Not every time, but over time, I think you can make money. And so our very first trade of the day during our trading session yesterday was New Relic to buy it. Look at the hollow candle. Look at that 75.50. It turned out to be the low of the day. If you look at an intraday chart on NEWR, we saw it here. It actually pulled back. I think we got in, we got in 76.82. Actually, as we got in, I was writing, I was putting the numbers into the name of the chart so we would know exactly where we got in. 76.82. So it was after the very initial, um, and it had come back down off of that early high. We got in somewhere in here, 76.82. And I said, you know, if we went much below the open, that would probably be a kind of an indication we might want to get out. But in this case, because we opened and we started up and we pulled back a little bit, we took a shot with this one. And look at what it did all day long. And then literally right before the close, um, we were at 80.29. So we were right about somewhere in here. It was probably around 3.57, 3.56 p.m. So about three or four minutes before the market closed, that's when we had to decide what to do with our positions. And so I told members, I'm taking the money. I don't know where it's going to go. But the whole idea was simply to do what the market makers did. Buy the opening sell-off and ride it. Take the money and run, which is what we did. Next up, MU. This is one I'm, I'm swing trading. But when we talked about it early in the session, it was at 65.50. We're still holding it, 
swing trading it, but it's up a buck from where we got in. DraftKings, 23.75 when we talked about it. Closed at 24.15. It's a swing trade. We're holding it. HEI, this one was a play on support at 163.07. It really didn't rally. I was afraid maybe of a gap down, so I just said, listen, we're getting out. We got out a little bit below the close. We got out 163, so essentially flat down just slightly. NVTS, they had a secondary offering. Stock gap down. This has been one of the hottest stocks in the market. But it was a gap down. It wasn't a lot of selling during the day. It actually turned out to be another hollow candle. We got in at 747. I was kind of hoping we'd bounce right off that 20. Didn't We, we kind of went back and forth intraday. But we were at 749 right before the close. I got out. Made two pennies. No biggie. Um, TNA. This is what I got into. I actually am building a position in TNA because I really like the small caps. I think they're poised for a big move to the upside. But anyway, right now, um, we got in 29.80, but we're going to hold that one. Um, I know this morning it was down a little bit, even though the NASDAQ was flying. The Dow was down. I think small caps are down. Uh, S&P was up a little bit, but where the strength is really at is in the um, um, tech-laden NASDAQ. Walmart, we're going to hold this one. I like that reversal on the 50-day. 147.40 is where we got in, up slightly on that one. NVIDIA, okay, so this was one that we took a position in just before the market closed because I said, you know what? This looks like probably the best stock I've seen going into earnings. I think they're going to have blowout numbers. And so we took a position right before the close. Now, right after the close, we're actually getting ready to close the room out. We had opened and NVIDIA shot up to 341. I just took the money and ran. We had members when the room closed, it was probably up to 360 at that point. We had members that were still holding. One member said they bought NVIDIA back in the year 2000 and have been holding ever since. You, know, you can only imagine uh, how much that's turned into. But anyway, uh, this morning, look at NVIDIA if you decided to hold it overnight. It's up $92. I left $57 on the table. You know what? I don't care. I made over 10% in about 15 minutes. But those that held, wow, 30% in a day. But this thing was setting up. Not only did it look great on its chart, but like I said, its pullback wasn't really a pullback. Market makers trying to lead us by the nose to the downside, trying to make us sell so they could buy. Happens all the time. Um, and then, uh, actually, I don't know why that, those charts are in here. Oh, it's in the wrong chart list. Here we go. So, and then the last one, I did the same thing. I actually already took a loss this morning. MDT, I bought at the, at the close yesterday. It was showing nice relative strength. Um, and it just pulled back. I thought maybe we would get a rally this morning. And I think this one was down two or three bucks when I, I think I got out two bucks down. I don't know where it is now, but we'll look. Yeah, it's down three bucks now. Um, so that one went the other way. The other one that I said I wanted to short, but I didn't pull the trigger was Snowflake. Look at Snowflake, down $25. Because prior to this last little rally, it was an awful performer relative to, um, relative to the uh, uh, software group. Anyway, so with earnings, uh, we already talked about NVIDIA. Just going to give you a couple. We talked about Snowflake. How about Splunk? So in the earnings spotlight, just give you a few of these. Splunk up 9%. Looks pretty good. Elf looked really good going into earnings. It's up 12% this morning. I showed you MT MDT. Uh, TD, so this is Toronto Dominion Bank down 1%. NetEase, uh, this is up 2%. Dollar Tree reported this morning, down 14 or down 13, almost 14%. And then uh, Best Buy, up 5% this morning. So we got a lot of movement back and forth on uh, those stocks. All right, for the three you must see, I'm going to just go to the dashboard. I'm going to look at the S&P 500, and I'm going to take the three worst from yesterday, and we're going to take a look at that. So how's that? We're going to do uh, ADI into it and agilent 
um, all three earnings from yesterday. So let's start off with ADI. Um, and I'm going to show you on a relative basis because because we talked about this. I didn't like ADI going in because look at the look at the um, relative strength. ADI is horrible relative strength. Should we have expected anything great? I didn't. Stock gaps down was down eight percent on the day, and now below support levels. It looks like potentially one sixty could be in the cards. Not interested. INTU. All right, this one looks like it was doing okay, right? Well, except look at the relative strength of Intuit. It topped in October of last year. Been downtrending versus its peers. Should we be surprised it's down 7.5%? I don't think so. How about Agilent, the third one? Another big gap down. Moving down, look at the relative strength. Should we be shocked that we got the gap down? No. Check out relative strength before you decide to hold any stock in the earnings report, into its earnings report. Check out relative strength because I think that is going to be, it's not going to be the absolute savior on every earnings report, but I think it gives you a good sense of what Wall Street firms think about a company as it heads toward its earnings report. If it's uptrending versus its peers, that's generally a good sign. Downtrending, not so much. Anyhow, that's it for me. Again, I want to thank everybody that came to the live trading session yesterday. We had a blast. Went over so many things. I had zero negative comments about the event. Went through all of them. There were a ton of them in the room that folks gave us a lot of uh, great marks. It was a lot of fun. I think folks made money even on a down day in the market, which makes it even sweeter. Anyhow, I really appreciate to everybody that came out. Uh, check us out over at Earnings Beats. We got our annual special, spring special going right now. You can save some serious money. All you got to do is go over to Earnings Beats and you'll see right here, spring special, buy more, save more. Click on it, sign up. You will be happy you did. Have a great day, everybody. Happy trading.